There seems to be a weakening consensus that all these dogs walking around, or more exactly having trouble walking around, with hip and elbow problems are the victims of years of genetic alteration that resulted in these problems that are widespread to the point where it is estimated that 70% of all large breeds suffer from hip dysplasia and canine arthritis. 70%, that is an astounding number of dogs with all the advancements in veterinary science and medicine that we have today. That is because it is most remarkable to think of or conceive that in the 1930s there was no such thing as hip dysplasia. Not because vets and dog owners and breeders were not smart enough to spot it, it was because it did not exist. You can look at vet school data, veterinary research, anecdotal breeder information, and any other sources that existed, and you will find absolutely no mention of widespread hip dysplasia or elbow problems. Now stop and think about this, and I mean really think about this. From the 1930s to the 1950s, a span of 20 years, something happened that caused 70% of large breed dogs, which by some estimates started at around 10 million animals for those heavier breeds, something happened to those dogs, something happened to about 60 breeds of dogs from thousands of family trees with multiple thousands of breeders, including great breeders, so-so breeders, lousy breeders, and some that just didn't give a damn. Something happened that caused 70% of those 10 million dogs to contract hip dysplasia. That is amazing. No, it's unbelievable. Incredible and unbelievable. Statistically, this is inconceivable. It's an anomaly. But something did happen during the 1930s and beyond that may have seemed unrelated, but which did affect all those dogs and all those breeds. And that was the rapid growth of the manufacturing of dog food based on the mixing of grains like corn, barley, wheat, and soybean meal to make a high protein, high carbohydrate diet that to the delight of the breeders caused dogs to grow much faster and be larger, present more conformation in adulthood. This was, however, a benefit of unintended consequences. The horse industry has known for years that when you raise a coat on a feeding regimen that includes too much protein during the formative growth stages, a problem arises. It is called epiphysitis, and it mirrors what we are finding in the canine world, but very few of those supposed dog experts in the know are willing to admit it. That situation is that dogs grew too fast, and while that was going on, the bones did not have the opportunity to gain mass and strength and hardness like they should, and this resulted in widespread pain and, in and inability to make basic movements that historically had been routine for all dogs because those weaker bones and joints could not absorb the stress and impact. We think now that this problem is not genetic, but it is nutritional in origin. Now think about a dog food company saying, oops, we did that not going to happen. I assume you and your pets are involved with just this kind of problem since you are watching a video about hip dysplasia. You and I both know no one can turn back the hands of time so the condition of your dog's joints are reality. There is another reality. Bone mineral density can be changed with very effective mineral supplementation and the improvement of overall digestion with probiotics and digestive enzymes. We see and hear it every week in feedback from our customers. Triad Performance Supplement from Build a Better Dog provides chelated minerals that greatly increase skeletal mineral metabolism and help bring sturdiness and strength back into those joints and the increased immune response that results from probiotics helps reduce inflammation and infection in connective tissue. Now close your eyes for a minute and think about watching the dog you love struggling with its normal activity, trying to get around and trying to keep up with you. What would you give to watch your dog run and play and wrestle with you for a, a run around walk and be out ahead of you without a lamp or a hop? Well, how about $15? The cost of one pretty good meal at a restaurant or moving popcorn for the evening. Just $14.95 plus shipping and you give your dog a chance for blessed relief. And if you're not satisfied with the results, you get your money back. Try getting your money back for a lousy move in stale popcorn. This is Jerry Perdue of Build a Better Dog saying give us a try. You have nothing to lose and your dog has everything to gain.